In our last episode of BigQuery Spotlight, we walk through the structure and components of the BigQuery resource model. In this episode, we're drilling in deeper on tables, covering each of the different table types and when to use them. Stay tuned. So what is a table? A BigQuery table is a resource that lives inside of a data set. It contains individual records organized into rows with each record composed of columns or fields that have an enforced data type. BigQuery supports many different data types, including decimal representations for precision in financial use cases, geography for geospatial data, plus structs and arrays for complex data. Oh, and keep an eye out for more data types that will support semi-structured data coming soon. Aside from simply storing your data, tables can also be used to control access to information and store metadata, such as descriptions and labels. There are several different types of tables in BigQuery, so let's go ahead and dig deeper into each one. The first table type we'll talk about is a managed table. Managed tables are tables where data is saved in BigQuery's native storage. Let's jump into the console and create a new managed table. When getting started with BigQuery, you might already have some data that you want to load into a table, such as a CSV file living on your computer. Here, you can specify a local file and leverage schema auto detect so that BigQuery infers the name and data type of each column. Alternatively, you may want to create an empty table where new rows will be inserted through data pipelines. In this case, you'll use the create table statement in a SQL query to create a new managed table with a specified schema and a set of configuration options. This is going to be a pretty big table. So let's take it one step further and include partition and cluster keys so that BigQuery stores the data in a way that will make queries much more performant. Another great thing about managed tables is that you can use time travel to access data that has been changed in the past seven days. So no need to panic if you accidentally erase a row or a table. You can still query data that was deleted or has expired. Now, what if your data is already stored somewhere else, like a data lake located in a cloud storage bucket? Other systems might also be accessing this data, say Spark workflows running on a data prop cluster. If you took the approach of replicating the data in a managed table, you would have two different versions, one stored in cloud storage and one stored in BigQuery, which could lead to mismatching analyses. This situation is a good use case for our second type of table. External tables give you the ability to query data that's stored outside of BigQuery, preserving a single source of truth. BigQuery currently supports querying data stored in Cloud Bigtable, Google Drive, and Cloud Storage, which can include leveraging Hive-based partitioning. Let's create an external table that points to a JSON file living in our storage bucket. This time, you'll specify that it's an external table and also specify the format and file path for the data. You can now join this data onto other tables in BigQuery so long as it's stored in the same region. Aside from creating an external table in BigQuery, you can also create a connection, which is more like an external data set. A connection links BigQuery to a Cloud SQL database and allows you to create external queries. An external query executes the query in Cloud SQL and returns results which you can leverage in BigQuery. Both connections and external tables are examples of federation, meaning BigQuery will go and fetch the data from the external source at the query's runtime. This offers a great approach to ensure everyone in your organization is working off of the same data sources. However, you should keep in mind that query performance probably won't be as high as querying data in native BigQuery storage. So far, we've talked about tables stored inside of BigQuery and tables stored outside of BigQuery. But let's imagine that you want to create an aggregate version of an existing BigQuery table. For example, a sum of sales each day. 
you could create a whole new managed table using a SQL query. But you would need to rerun that statement each time the aggregate table needs to be refreshed. A better option is to use a view. Views are virtual tables that are defined by a SQL query. In BigQuery, you can create a logical view, a view where the defining query is simply executed at runtime. Or you can create a materialized view, which is recomputed in the background when the base table changes. Materialized views are great for improving performance because the results are saved and reused as opposed to rerunning the query each time you're leveraging the view. And better yet, BigQuery will actually reroute queries against your base table to the materialized view in order to make things more efficient. However, there are some limitations on the SQL you can use, but these are in flux, so keep an eye out on future releases. On the other hand, logical views are less restrictive in the terms of SQL that you can use. Logical views are also really useful for granting users access to results of a query, even if they don't have access to the underlying data set. This is known as an authorized view. For more details, check out our previous video linked below. Congrats! Now you know all the different table types in BigQuery and some best practices on when to use them. For more guidance on getting started with BigQuery or digging deeper into BigQuery resource concepts, check out the links below. Thanks for joining us today for BigQuery Spotlight. Watch out for the next episode and remember, stay curious.